we're seeing a dramatic pickup in people that cashed out of some of their crypto and you know they don't want to sit in the bank because the reason they got into crypto in the first place is they don't trust the banks and those people are buying gold they're buying silver um they're diversifying because i think anytime you have any big wins uh however you get them you want to take some of that risk off the table and that's what these types of investors love to do Hey, hey, Inspired Tribe, my fellow freedom lovers, it's John Nolan here. Thank you so much for tuning in to another Inspired Conversation. And today's guest and his company are all about protecting your wealth, helping you, exp helping you expand your wealth, but also letting you know what is really going on in the economy today. Uh, we're, so, we're talking so much about preparing on all areas and financial preparedness is one of those key issues that a lot of people don't want to think about. That's his daily bread and butter Please welcome with me, Colin Plume, the CEO of Noble Gold Investments. Hi, how are you? Good to be here. Oh, good to see you, Colin. Always great to talk with you. How are you? Oh, I'm fantastic. Thanks for having me on. Oh, always great to have you, Colin. Listen, I'm going to jump right into it. I'm I'm following these experts and you know and and looking at economic blogs and channels and and whatnot. And I'm I'm looking at some of the numbers and I'm looking into my own wallet. We have an effective inflation, if I count everything, not just pick and choose, of 30 to 50% kind of ish. We have a housing market that you and I talked about is absolutely overvalued right now. Runaway debt, every 100 days, a trillion is added to the national debt. And yet, when I turn on the mainstream news, they tell me it's a bull market. Stocks are doing great, and <laughs> it's the best economy ever. Mm -hmm. Is this la la land, or, or is this the calm before the storm? Yeah, I mean, I, I I think it's, you know, you have so much of the the wealth uh, right now in companies like BlackRock and, you know, these big name companies that are propping up the, the real estate market. Um, it, it, and a lot of it, I think, you know, you look at, you have to look at every sector and really dive into it to really see what's going on. But you see like real estate's a great example. They're, you know, they're buying all these residential homes and so, you know, residential homes hit the market and you'd think, well, interest rates are much higher than they were two years ago. Prices should be lower. And yet they're not because they're buying these homes and they're just looking at it as buying uh, apartments. Right. They're just buying, you know, single family homes as apartment buildings. And that's really propping up the economy. And, and I think the big thing is, is that they're trying to create an economy where people can't really just own anything on their own, that they're so dependent on these large, I mean, you go to a lot of cities now and you go down the street, you know, we have uh, a lot of our uh, clients and, and employees are in, in different parts of Texas. And I was talking to somebody that said like 60% of his street is owned by big corporate, not necessarily Blacklock, but other big corporations and so when another property hits the market, they just come in and just buy them and they just come in all cash, you know, which is tough for a seller because they want to get top dollar and they also don't want to have anything that's contingent. So they, they take these cash offers uh, over what you and I would do, which is go to the bank and get, you know, traditional financing um, because it obviously makes a lot more sense for an individual to do that. But these companies go in, they go and buy it all cash, qu close quick. And then uh, they'll refinance, you know, pull the money out and, and then just, you know, keep doing the same thing over and over. So it, it's been propping up the the real estate, uh, residential real estate in a lot of different ways. Uh, in terms of commercial, we, we definitely have a massive issue, probably one of the biggest bubbles we've ever had uh, in our nation's history with all this commercial space that is vacant all over, office space vacant all over. Um, and even Jerome Powell finally has said, you know, we have a real problem uh, in the office market. So um, I, I think there's some areas that are that look good for certain things. But for the traditional investor who can't buy a house all cash and, you know, and even buying that house all cash, they're, they're BlackRock and these guys, they're not worried about today. They, they're thinking investing in 10, 15, 20 years. You know, investors today want a good return on their investment. Now they want liquidity. They want all the things that you would want as a traditional investor. So 
that kind of investment doesn't really appeal. I don't, I don't think BlackRock thinks they're going to make a return on those properties for many years. They get a tax write off and they just are able to dominate uh, a sector, uh, which is, you know, something big corporations can do. And it's just creating this economy where people are more reliant on big companies and more reliant on the government, uh, unfortunately, which is not good for, for any of us. Uh, and then, as you mentioned, the debt goes up by, you know, $1 trillion every 30 days. So I, I don't, listen, if we didn't have a debt issue the way we did, you know, you'd look at the stock market and be like, great, but to have, a, you know, $33 trillion in debt uh, and, and, you know, GDP is not growing that great and we still have inflation higher than what we want, I, I, I would argue the, the economy is not as strong as, as what they're telling us, at least. I love how conservatively you put things. I'm I'm a little, you know, I'm a little more out there. I just go, uh, this is going to, you know, this is eventually going to uh, cause some huge turmoil. I, that's what I honestly believe. And the interesting thing is, Colin, the more time that passes, the more people that I know that I talk to and they go, you know, a year ago, I was still looking at this commodity and, and I was looking at that and that and that. Right now, everybody's just going do you have gold? Do you have silver? And are you looking into other precious metals? And this is not even, you know, they're even going away from crypto right now. The, everybody wants safety and they're anticipating that especially gold and silver are going to eventually make that jump that it, the market would actually show they should yeah. the price jump too. So that's your, that's what you do. That's what you're really good at. Do you see that too, that this is just a time where people are looking to not just make a return, but also have peace of mind uh, for the future. Absolutely. And I'm seeing it in, in cryptocurrency uh, buyers. I mean, we're seeing a dramatic pickup in people that cashed out of some of their crypto and, you know, they don't want to sit in the bank because the reason they got into crypto in the first place is they don't trust the banks. And those people are buying gold. They're buying silver. Um, they're diversifying because I think anytime you have any big wins, uh, however you get them, you want to take some of that risk off the table. And that's what these types of investors love to do. Uh, at least the smart ones will just get out of some risky stuff. And listen, you're seeing that volatility in crypto right now. So they're, they're wanting to take some of, you know, take some of their chips off the table and get into some assets they own. Number one, number two, uh, I think they like the idea of holding some assets because a lot of people are getting fearful of the U S they're concerned about digital currencies, you know, what the government's going to do when, you know, we're not able to to pay our debts, uh, which it's, you know, we're getting pretty close to that situation. So they want to have that liquid wealth in their hands so that if they have to leave the country, they can go somewhere else. And obviously the value of gold and silver, platinum, palladium is good anywhere in the world. What I, you know, I look at a few different things to kind of talk about. And that's why I was saying, like, you can't look at any economy on a, you know, and just look at like everything's great, or everything's bad. You know, interesting what we're seeing with hedge funds in gold and silver. And obviously hedge funds, you know, they need, you know, big money moving in or out and they're looking for, you know, pretty good returns, high returns. When gold broke 2050, uh, we saw a, almost $11 billion in hedge fund money move into the gold market long mm -hmm. on gold which was pretty fascinating because the last time we saw that kind of money move in was 2019 is actually betting against the market. Uh, so it bet against gold the other way, um, which is, which is really, I don't want to get way into the weeds, but if you think about, you know, the hedge funds betting against the gold market and then what happened during the pandemic where gold did pull back and then it went on a massive run, it's, it's quite fascinating. And it, I think Everyone knows that there's a lot of big financial players that probably caught wind of what was going to happen with, you know, COVID and all that in, in late 2019. So they were betting against certain areas. Um, so you see this massive hedge fund money moving in to gold at 2050, which, you know, for a lot of people that are outside of the market, they're looking at the charts going, well, you know, maybe gold's still too expensive, but we're seeing some really large money moving in and buying it uh, at, at above that $2,000, uh, well above that $2,000 price. So I think that's a good sign uh, for people holding gold right now. Uh, obviously we've had some people sell some gold and take some profit because 
we've had people buy gold from us in the $1,200 range and the $1,400. So, you know, if they have bills or they had things they have to do, that's a pretty significant profit. Uh, and if they've done it into their IRA, you know, their taxes are deferred. Um, so a lot of people have been doing that in their IRA. So it's been a, you know, pretty interesting time. So I, I think, Gene, you have to look at, you know, where, where the big money is going. Uh, obviously, you have a lot of money moving into crypto also. But, you know, the crypto money, you know, those guys like Fidelity and those guys, they make money on both sides, right? They make, they don't, they're not just buying Bitcoin because they think it's going to go long for a long time. They're buying it also because they they make money at all, you know, they make a little bit on every trade and they make a little bit coming in and out. So they want to gain some market share because they're going to make it. And when, if we see another crypto collapse and cold, you know, two year winter, they'll make a ton of money on that also because, uh, you know, people will sell, you know, the whole way down just like they did last time. And they'll, you know, they'll make fees, you know, the whole time through. So, um, you know, that's the one thing I've always loved about Noble Gold and our business is that, you know, we, we charge a fee when you buy the metal, when you're getting out, there's, there's no fees because we just take the bullion and sell it to somebody else. So it, it's really a win-win when the market goes up and we have a lot of winners right now. Uh, that are really happy that they got into gold. And, um, you know, a lot of people are holding because, you know, they're looking at 2,300. Some are looking at 2,500 gold. Um, so they're they're in for a little bit longer. And then obviously silver is still very undervalued, uh, sitting in the mid-20 range. Um, so, that, you know, I think you have those two markets. But then it's like, okay, so let's look at that. And then let's look at consumer debt, just, you know, individual debt, yeah. credit card debt, well above $1 trillion. Um, you know, some of the credit card companies are consolidating. That's scary, you know, because they're just going to keep raising rates. Um, so that's a, a very difficult situation. And that's an so, average rate of 24.3% uh, interest rate. Yeah. That's insane. That's insane. Which is, is you know, from before they raised rates, I mean, that credit card rates were in the 16 to 18% range. So we're like eight or nine percentage points higher eight or nine percentage points on a credit card in a monthly accruing situation for an individual is devastating. Uh, so yeah, that's, so you look at it, so you have BlackRock buying all these houses, you know, they renting them out. They're not, they're not buying them, flipping them, they're holding them. So they're trying to create this economy where people are sort of tied into these big corporations and they can't own anything, um, unfortunately. And so that's, I think that's a bad uh, recipe for just, you know, normal people, day-to-day -day people. So uh, I think that there are some areas, some bright spots where people have done well. Uh, but overall, I think there's a lot of troubling signs uh, right now for for the U.S. economy, especially. I mean, here and, and, and abroad, uh, you know, Europe is not doing any better. No. But way worse, actually. But uh, one more thing that I think is highly significant is what signals are you getting from the Fed right now and from the banking sector in general? Because uh, we've talked about this before and it's only gone downhill since. Yeah. How do you see that situation? Yeah, the, the banks are really tightening up uh, right now. Um, I've seen more offerings. Uh, as someone that is an investor in a lot of different things, you know, one of the things I do is 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 lending. You know, people come and I, you know, for businesses and on real estate. And I'm seeing, you know, things that would typically go to a bank, high credit, high, you know, companies that have been established that just need another line of credit to add more equipment or do things that I would have never seen. You know, these are companies that, you know, these are opportunities that I think are, are exciting for me as someone that's diversified in a lot of different areas. So the banks are really tightening up right now, and it's making it difficult for business owners to expand. Uh, so I, and that and that's you know makes it hard for them to to, to hire. Uh, and so you know as much as they claim this unemployment rate is where it's at, um, most of the industries that I see, a lot of them are really tightening up. I'm not seeing this this massive, you know, hard to find, you know, low unemployment uh, rate situation. Uh, I don't see employers around me that are really expanding that much. Um, you know, the precious metals business is expanding. We're one of the industries that is. So, you know, we are growing, but um, most of the sectors, I mean, if you look at, you know, a lot of the commercial areas uh, for real estate, 
I mean, the, the, the layoffs and the, the amount of money. I mean, I was talking to a very uh, well-established commercial real estate broker who for 20 years was, you know, highly paid, a lot of transactions. And basically the last two years has done, you know, three to four transactions. So there's a lot of sectors that have really been uh, hampered by these high rates. Um, and then, you know, just the fear, overall fear of, of jumping in. Uh, so it's, it's, I, I think we're, we're, we're in a difficult time. And then, you know, obviously that's why this election is going to be, you know, more important than ever. I think it's, you know, people are going to need to really look at what's important to them. And, and hopefully um, we see some changes uh, that are fundamental, uh, you know, to people. I've, I saw Biden talk about these credits for homeowner buyers and home, home, but it's, you know, it's so minuscule compared to, uh, just having a stronger economy and less debt. Uh, you know, I'd rather, I'd rather have, you know, rates down a bit and a stronger economy than, uh, you know, a, a t- eight or $10,000 tax credit. I, I think it's, it's more importantly to, to give money to areas that we need to grow like entrepreneurship and, you know, development and th- these kind of areas. Uh, then, you know, th- there's been a lot of these ploys, you know, the college credit, you know, uh, giving people, reprieve on college. And now this, this, uh, this deal with, with homeowners, I, I don't think it fixes really the big problem. It's just a way to, to try to get some votes uh, in the bank. So. I, I don't think it fixes anything. And I, I do think, you know, it's a very, we're in a volatile situation right now, this whole election year. And that's why when we make recommendations, you know, those are the things where I go, Hey, Right now, you're looking at a lot of unpredictability over the next months and, of course, beyond because nothing's going to change overnight. So we're looking just at a very unstable time that's coming and it's already here. And with that, my my uh, suggestions are very conservative. I go, you know, if you've worked all your life, if you have 30, 40 years, you've created some wealth, you've got something. If you ask me, here's what I would do. I would go, I would go into something like precious metals right now, and that's what we're doing because historically, historically, that has always been uh, kind of the best way to make it through such times and come out on the other side of it better. Yeah. So, uh, do you see an, an uptick in people that just say, "Hey, uh, I'm out of everything else"? Uh, what and, and and what are they? What are they specifically asking for? Are people going into IRAs? Are people going into just buying uh, bullying? What is the what is the main trend? I mean, uh, I would say IRAs have seen the largest uptick because I think with where the stock market is, people are like, okay, I have a pretty good gain. You know, I was down for a few years. I want to get out of that because that's a that's a big chunk uh, of of money for for a lot of people. Um, you know, we're, you know, at Noble, we're unique in that, you know, we've done so many IRAs, uh, you know, since we've been in business and we have a unique philosophy in the business and that many of our competitors, when they do the IRA, they just sell you the gold. Once it's there, they're done. We actually, you know, we'll buy it back, of course, but also like if you call us in a year or two years or five years, you have a question, you know, we're available and we don't charge anything for that service. So, you know, a lot of times what you see in the industry is, you, you know, people are trying to sell you gold. They're hot to trot. As soon as they sell you the gold, you never hear from that person again. We, you know, we stay around for a long time. We're there when you're ready to sell. You know, you're going to need to do required mandatory distributions when you hit a certain age. Maybe you didn't see the statement. Um, there's things like that, that. And so you can call us and get that service. And so I think IRAs have seen the biggest uh, uptick with us, just that that service level that we've seen and, and our reviews have just skyrocketed. Uh, you know, if you look at us over this year alone, you know, averaging close to 60 reviews per month, um, you know, it's a pretty significant number. Um, so yeah, I think IRAs have been the biggest uptick for, for us. Um, and, and I think what we're seeing, uh, interestingly is you're seeing people buy gold. We're seeing some of our clients have bought gold a while ago, buy gold, and then they're transitioning some of that money into silver. Uh, because they believe silver is undervalued. So if you do that all in the IRA, that's tax deferred. So that's so there's some interesting things happening that hasn't hasn't happened uh, in the business in a long time, because I think the gold to silver ratio is so big. You know, we're almost at 90 to one. 
um, around 90 to one. Whereas, you know, it used to be at one point it was 16 to one uh, gold to silver, you know, now we're at 90. So there's a lot of, you know, charts that look at that and say that silver is undervalued. Uh, so I think IRAs are big and then just silver in general, silver bullion bars. We're just tell, sending it, selling a ton of those uh, right now. Uh, yeah, I'm a I'm a big silver fan myself. I I lean more toward silver than gold. But so I've, I've, I'm combining these two questions here. So number one, what do you think if you're gonna you know not maybe on a conservative side, but maybe real potential? What do you think where could silver go in the next five to ten years potentially? And yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let's do that one first. I mean, five to ten years. I mean, I I think silver. You know, all time high for silver is fifty dollars now. It's we're in the mid twenties. So I think if the demand continues um, with, you know, all the solar and the green energy, if that's if that's going to continue the way it is, which it seems like it is for a lot of different reasons, um, I think it blows through those numbers, uh, which would be a significant gain from where it is today. Uh, they've already said there, you know, the estimates are there's going to be shortages for the next five years in terms of silver. So I, I really like as a precious metal, I, I really you know, gold and and so and platinum, palladium are are you know significantly more expensive. Um, and then I I just think on the jewelry side, we're starting to see silver being used more. You know, it's at some point at gold at five or ten or fifteen thousand dollars an ounce, it's going to become pretty expensive for jewelry, right? Oh yeah. Um, so it's going to be hard for someone to 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 have that ring in gold when gold's at ten thousand dollars an ounce. It's going to be great for investors, but it's going to become you know, pretty difficult unless somebody wants a, a ring that's so small that you can't see it or it's, you know, it's really I a haven't little met bit. that woman yet. I haven't <laughs> met that woman yet. <laughs> nope, I haven't met her. I haven't met her. <laughs> I'm not meeting her in this life either. Uh, it's not my wife. Uh, so I think that, uh, you know, it's it's one of those situations where it's, um, you know, silver is just a great value and, you um, you know, the silver market's pretty small. And so when it moves, it moves fast. Um, you know, Bitcoin has already surpassed the silver market. Uh, so if you get an idea, it's a pretty small market. So a lot of buying in that market can really move uh, the needle pretty quickly, which is nice. So Colin, if, if people are watching and listening, they go, hey, you know, I've never done this before, or I'm thinking of converting my IRA, or I'm just thinking of buying can they call you guys? Can they ask questions? Do they have 100%. to pay up front? How does it work? No, they can call and ask as many questions. We are one of the few companies left that you're going to talk to a real person. You're not talking to an AI generated person. You're going to talk to a live person here uh, who knows a lot about precious metals. Uh, they own precious metals. Uh, we, you know, obviously sell, you know, millions and millions and millions of dollars every month in precious metals. We ship it. We store it. I mean, we've really done this for a long time. So if you want something physical, you don't want a stock, you don't want an ETF, you want to know what you got and you want to get away from people owning your assets, you want to own something on your own. I think this is a, it, it's a really interesting opportunity because so many of the things that we used to own, homes, as we talked about, um, so many things are moving away from, from you owning them on your own. Uh, so for people that want that kind of direct ownership, uh, what we do at Noble Gold Investments is really exciting and they can ask as, mil as many questions as they need. And, uh, you know, I think calling in and, and mentioning that you heard us here and, and saying that you saw the show and you want some information. We have different guides, all, all types of information, emails. Um, you could you could spend a lot of time reading or you could just call in and ask a lot of questions and and we can do that for you also. That's fantastic. What's that number, Colin? 877 Six four six five three four seven. There you go. We're gonna put that down here. You can also go to noblegoldinvestments.com and and uh, sign up. They they got all these guides. What's really important to us, Colin, like you mentioned, is uh, we haven't had a we haven't had any ever any bad feedback from anybody. Everybody loves the way your company operates. Five star reviews uh, galore. It's and that's that's important to us. And so that's we're we're proud partners. And, and really excited about our partnership. But thank you for everything you do in helping people, you know, preserve and expand their wealth through very difficult times and where it's not easy to trust someone, you know, and tr trust is hard to come by. It's earned. So I, we really appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, it's our it's our company, you know, family business. 
a lot of the people that work here are family members or relatives. So we take it serious and, you know, we, we, we ship the metal quick and, and we're open six days a week. We're even open on Saturdays uh, for about six hours in the morning because we know people are busy. So, but we're open from 6.30 a.m. to uh, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And then Saturday, we're open from 9 to 1 Pacific Standard Time. So pretty much any hour you're, you you need us, we're, we're available and we're just happy to serve and, and uh, be available to people to answer questions. Well, thank you, sir. Inspired Tribe, hop over. Give him a call or, or check out the website, noblegoldinvestments.com. I'll tell you this. Uh, our family has a lot of peace of mind because – we are in precious metals and that's, you know, we always felt that's a great uh, investment and great safe haven down the line. Colin Plume, the CEO, thank you so much for joining us again today. Always an honor, sir. Thanks, Shane. Good to, good to be here. And Inspire Tribe, thank you so much for tuning in. You know, we love you. We appreciate you. We'll be back with you again very, very soon.